In this video, I am going to show you some of the tips and tricks to work with what is called live trace and live painting inside of Adobe Illustrator. These are technically two different elements. You can work with one and not the other. However, it's a rarity that we actually do do that. So to begin, as far as creating a live trace, you can actually take any image or graphic and you can live trace it. Live trace can be done via coloring. Uh, it can also be on a grayscale. It can even be a black and white. Now, one of the nice things with live trace and why we introduce it at this point is because you could technically use it to create, you know, a logo directly from your drawings. So to start out here, what I am going to do is I'm going to create a new document. And we're going to go ahead and do just our print document. I'm going to do a six by four inch for this demo. If you want to follow along with your own graphic, anything will work as far as the size goes. I'm going to go ahead and create. Now what I'm going to do here is I already preemptively went out to Pixabay and I found a black and white vector graphic that was a butterfly. So I'm going to go ahead and go to file and place and I'm going to navigate to my desktop here and grab my butterfly graphic. Now, friendly reminder here, remember that it attaches to your cursor. You can either click to place or you can click hold and drag to size to the artboard area. Now, you've placed this, but the next step is, is now we want to actually start a trace on it. While you have the graphic highlighted, if you go over to your properties panel in the essentials, you'll have some quick actions down at the bottom here. Two of which I encourage is to do an embed so that now the graphic will be stored directly in the Adobe Illustrator file and then going and doing an image trace. So I'm going to go ahead and click embed and notice how I lose that big X through the graphic here. It's now part of this file. And then I'm going to come over to the side here and I'm going to choose image trace. Now when you click on image trace, you're going to get a pop-up menu. In the pop-up menu here, you can see you have several different options here. You can do a custom or you have some already preset options for you here. For this example, we're going to go with black and white logo. You click on that and notice now nothing really has changed here, but now you have an image trace attached to this object here. With that, you can actually come back and change your mind. Number one, you can actually click on this drop down and you can go between the different options. So let's say I do line art. Yeah, so line art, as you can see here, you lose a lot of the detail. Um, it may take a moment to refresh like it did there. But what you can also do is if I go back to black and white logo, don't ignore this little icon right next to it here. If you really want to fine tune your graphic, this is the image trace panel that will allow you to come in and really work through as far as your thresholds, also paths, corners, and noises, uh, and things like that as far as trying to bring the overall graphic together here. Now, if you're scanning something in and you want to use it in this fashion, one thing I'd suggest is making sure that all of your edges are closed, that you don't have any free open areas here. Like for example, on the wing, like not leaving at the bottom here, like a gap. Also using a dark colored pen or marker to fill in the edges or the strokes is very helpful as far as making sure that these areas are closed off. So with that, I'll go ahead and close the image trace we need to do one more thing. We could technically stop at this point, but what happens is, is you're not going to be able to do any coloring on the object. So you've traced it. It's now vector based, but you can't really do anything with it. However, keeping your object highlighted over on your quick actions, you should have an expand option. If I click on expand here, you should see now how I'm getting these blue outlines where I can actually see the paths and anchors here. This now enables me that I could come over to my toolbox and I can select uh, what is called the shape builder tool. This will allow me to now go in and actually convert different elements here, not only to shapes, but I can also assign colors to them using the live paint. So with this now, for instance, if I come over to fill and let's say I want to use maybe 
purple. I come back over to my object here, I click, and you see how I'm getting kind of this grayed area. I just click again. I can come down here and kind of click. And now what I can do is using the Shape Builder tool, I can actually come in and I can begin to kind of design out as far as the overall coloring of the butterfly. The last thing I want to point out to you here is be careful of the background whenever you expand. You see how whenever I'm hovering over this background here, I can actually click on it. What that means is that is an actual recognized area. So if I actually click with the yellow, you see how I can fill it in. One thing a lot of folks forget to do that I encourage you, uh, make sure you double check this. You can use a fill of none. This is great whenever you're working with images like this that you can remove the overall background and then it will be see-through to anything you want to put behind it. If you wanted to have a different color or you know a pattern and things like that. Finally, the only other thing that I'd like to show you with this video is I'm going to go back to my selection tool and deselect. As you can see here on the artboard, we still have some like dead space over here because the butterfly didn't fit in the entire area. What we can use is what is called the artboard tool, which is located right down here at the bottom of your toolbox. If you click on that, you will get the free transform corners and edges on the artboard itself. So I can actually come in here and tighten up my artboard a little bit so I don't have some you know, free dead floating space there. And then if you just go back to the selection tool, Adobe Illustrator will record and save your new artboard size for you.